Okay, g'day there. Now I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and again I'm in country Victoria in Australia. Similar process, today we're working with clear prime Belgian linen, palette knives and oil paint. Now there's a bit of overcastness going on today so what we've got is a bit of a hazy sort of environment but we're not going to worry about that, we won't let that stop us. So what I'm going to do is Basically this time I've got nothing on the board except for a bit of tape around the edges and what I want to do is compose the picture and get into it. Right, let's go. As usual, biggest differences. What are we going to do? What's the biggest difference here? First, I might just grab a little bit of blue, brown, just want to compose some edges. Now I'm going to go for a large, quite a large foreground. I want a big lead in. so. That'll be kind of where the foreground is. Okay, so I'll just blob a few darks for that foreground. Let's have a look. Got a burnt sienna and uh, alizarin crimson. Meridian green. That gives us quite a good neutral dark. Okay, now. I'm just going to bang those trees in there with a few darks. Actually, a little bit too dark. There is a rock on the side here that is that dark, so I'll use that. I want that rock there. Maybe some other shadows for the little rocks. You overdo the shadows and then later on you get rid of them. Just leave what you need. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'll get back into that foliage. I'm going to lighten that a bit. Meridian green, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Let's have a look. Just very lightly, only just touching. Just banging some edges in there and composing the picture as we go. Alright, a little bit here. Maybe a tad here. Like so. A little bit on there. All right. So that's just basically composed a picture in the dark tones. Let's put this one away. Okay. Now I'm going to try to keep this live time and there'll be no edits. I just want to do a start to finish painting and just show you how it all works. Okay. Let's bung in those nice distant blue hills that we've got there. What do we got? It's hard to tell. Oh yeah, you can see in the camera just there some distant blue hills. Cobalt blue, magenta, white. Let's have a look at that. A little bit more magenta, a little bit more white. A bit more white maybe than that. Lighten it off, let it recede into the distance. Okay, what do we got? Something along those lines. Lightly drop it in here and there. Okay. You can see what I'm doing. I might, I might have to stand back a bit more. somewhere near what I want, so we've got that. Now, that sky, let's bung that sky in, shall we? All right, I'll just move that little blue out of the way for now. Keep the palette nice and clean. Okay, the burnt sienna. Some white, plenty of white. Plenty more white because I've made <laughs> too much burnt sienna basically. Let's go white. A little bit of yellow ochre. Okay, what have we got here? Yep, yeah, that's good, but I still want more yellow ochre than that. Because I've gone and overdone this, I've run out of white, so that won't matter. I'll just 
have to get some more of those bungers in. There we go, just get a nice light toned sky today. Plenty of beautiful colours going on there. Right now, bring that sky down to the edge of the hill with the pallet knife. Keep the pallet knife clean. Bring it down. Bring it down. Alrighty. What else we got here? Let's bung in. Biggest differences, what do we got? That soil looks like a good thing to be putting in next. Alright. Bit of burnt sienna. Bit of cat orange. Add a magenta. I like to throw a bit of magenta into those mixes sometimes. Just livens it up a bit. Not that much magenta though. Okay. It's a really nice earthy colour, so I'm really going to play up on that. I'll just put a bit more burnt sienna though. We don't get too carried away. Oops, no, that's alright. Okay. There's a nice rocky ledge that comes right up to the top there. Beautiful rocky ledge, so. You can bring those colours right up there. Now, to actually paint the colour of the rocks, I'll need to alter that a bit. What do you got here? Here's some of this paint on the side here that I've put away from earlier on. Just mix up a nice rainbow colour, half mixed colours that I like to mix. Let's see what we've got. Okay, now, put some of the grass in, which will be yellow ochre and white predominantly. Maybe a tad of burnt sienna thrown in with that mix. Yep, throw that in like that. Just lightly touching here and there. Varying the, varying the angle of the marks. Yeah, just very carefully go upwards maybe to create some illusion of grassy foliage. Now, before I go any further, I'll stand back and have a look. Okay, that, um, let's just get some white, get some extra white going. 
I've just got a uh, massive tin of white here for this little painting, which is a bit crazy, but that's just the way it goes. And uh, I'm just doing it over here because that's the only blank spot I've got to open it. There you go, look at that. Art Spectrum, you get these massive tins, that's a litre. Fantastic stuff for uh, doing everything you need. And if you're quick enough, if you have leftover paint, you can put it back in, shut the lid and knock it all down flat. And uh, provided you use it again not too far away, it doesn't, it doesn't dry. Sometimes you get a little bit of a skin if you leave it too long between painting sessions. What you do is you just, uh, just take the skin off and you're back in the game again. Alright, now what am I doing here? Okay, foliage. Foliage on the light, where the light's hitting the trees. There we go, yep. Very lightly touched is what we got here. Okay, where do I want that foliage? Some there, maybe? Some over here. A little bit there, not too much. Clean that up. A little bit there. Now. Yeah. Clean a few edges up here. What do we got? Let's pull that up. What I might also do is just grab this slightly smaller knife. I've just put a little bit too much foliage here. I'd like to take it off, and I can do that just by pulling back down. With a clean knife, you can take the paint off. that hill, that edge of the hill is fairly important to get that right so keep that fairly clean and sharp. Just soften the foliage a bit by pulling it through. What have we got here? Pull the knife through to soften it a bit. When you pull the knife through like that it really gives a soft edge and it gives the feeling of the light emulating around the edge of the foliage. Like it's a very light toned sky because it's high level cloud. So what you do is, by softening the edges, it's almost like the light's coming back over and eating over the foliage. A bit more yellow ochre in that one. Stand back a little. Right. Piece of uh, power. Just going to soften a few edges. So pulling the knife through. Got to be careful, just go. Taking paint off as you go. I'm, I'm taking paint off sometimes, pulling that, the orange is underneath, so I'm pulling the paint off back to the orange soil. And also softening a bit here and there. Where I feel it needs to be softened. crazy but don't worry. I think don't worry anyway. That's better. Get that light smudge through it. 
except we don't want that one there. Now we'll take that one out. Pull this down. Constantly softening edges as I go. of that rock a little darker. Nice rocky platform falling off there. And what have you got? Earthy, grassy stuff. Let's put a few, uh, just a few upward marks. Creates the illusion of grass. Gives you that feeling of grass. Don't have to use a, uh, a little instrument to get the uh, subtlety sometimes. Flies, got flies, always got flies. Let's peel that back there for a minute. Oops, a daisy. There we go. I'll stand and have a look at what I've got. Up a dusty mauve colour over here. Oop, not quite what I wanted, but that'll do. Stand back another little bit. Uh, the good old kookaburra. Just a few uh, highlights. We've got some nice highlights in the middle ground there. Bring those little babies in, lead your eye in through the picture, half mix some over there. Okay. Now what I want to do is just clean this up here, something's telling me to clean that, so away we go. Because that's where your eyes are getting led to. It needs to be cleaner and... Oop. Now, it must be time to take the tape off and then have a look at what I've got. Okay, where will I start? Up here, I reckon. Any fun and games when the wind starts blowing. There we go. No worries there. Bung that in the bin. Alright, I'll have a look at what I've got. OK, 
Okay. White, magenta, blue, half mix, beautiful rainbow colours. Darker tone there, so I'll go darker. Less white in the mix. Oh, we got. You can see what I'm doing, yeah, yeah. Just getting the odd branch here and there. get too carried away with the branches because you make the paint look too fiddly sometimes. Taking a bit of that paint, that yellow, up to it to thin that branch off. Adding a bit more foliage. Okay, what have we got here? Hang on. Bung that in the bin. Just trying to add a bit of fun and games in there to create some sting. A bit of white with that one. White on orange, half mix. Look down to give those beautiful, that beautiful rock ledge that's there. Sometimes I go over the edges, it's all fun and games. Hang on, that might be too much. So I 
fine line between getting it right and uh, just going crazy. What do I want here? Let's have a look. That up there. Kind of all right. We might just get rid of some of that. Take some of that off. It's just taking paint off then. Sometimes that's the way to go. Take the paint off. Because it's quite an overcast day, just putting some of those highlights in here are quite orange. And uh, on an overcast day, it's good to paint all the uh, correct tones that you're seeing to give the realism. But sometimes when you get a few accents like that, just look for the colours that you can find in nature and just sting them up a bit. That can give you extra power in your painting. Alright, I'll stand back and have a look. That's alright, almost there. I'll just put a bit more uh, grassy tone in a few spots. Stand back and have a look where though, won't I? Which I may not, so that's the thing, I may not. Then again, I may. Just here. There's a bit of grass in there I've noticed, it's looking good. Coming in there. Sticks. Okay. White, yellow ochre. Alright, I'll stand back and have another look. I think that's about it. Okay, that'll do. Um, I just wanted to add that little bit more oomph, but it's so easy to wreck a painting like this because this is a, in some ways it's a very subtle, subtle subject. Um, because it's a subdued, subdued light, uh, sometimes you feel like you need to, once you put that subtle light in, you've just got to pull it out a little bit just to give an accent, which I think I've done, but it's very easy to go over the top and then get carried away and then it's not relating to what you're looking at. I always like to have the same relation to what I'm looking at, but um, sometimes just ping, spike it up a bit. Anyway, look at that, the sun's finally come out, now I've finished painting. Oh well, you get that. Alright, let's just get that off there. A bit more of this off here, hang on. Yeah, alright, so that'll do. I'll get the camera off and let you have a look. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. Now, I have to confess, this was going to be live real time, and it was and it is, but I couldn't help myself. As soon as I grabbed the uh, camera and put it in my hands, looked at the painting again, I thought, hang a sec, there's a couple more things I'd like to do just to power it up. So, unfortunately, I put about three more marks in, which you didn't see. Anyway, we'll have a look at what I've done. Now that little highlight just here, that orange one, I bunged that in to create more power. 
this piece of grass here I also bunged that in because it's a very big mark but I felt like that that's something that was missing in the subject there's quite a big mark out there when you have a look just here and that's a good accent point and that was uh tended to be missing in the painting a little so I just threw that one in and then of course for a bit more fun why not just uh go over the edges just to make it a bit uh, a bit different and uh, whoops I've gone over the edges here too I just like to do that it just uh, basically you've got it um, confined and then you've got it confined in a little boundary and then all of a sudden you've just cut loose a little bit and I just I don't know I just like that look all right well there's the uh, painting and the subject now let's have a look at the palette okay now this is the palette I usually always work with you've got your cobalt blue burnt sienna alizarin crimson yellow ochre white what's left of the white magenta what's left of the magenta and viridian green not to forget cadmium orange and uh, we'll just bring you in so you can see how some of the techniques I use, I like to use half mix. I quite often half mix the colours to get that extra sting in them rather than just uh, mixing completely. Here's a good example. Look at that. You get those beautiful rainbow effects when you half mix them and palette knife is great for that. Alright, well that's about it. So there you go. Signing off. See you later. Okay, well thank you. If you've watched this far, remember to like the video, subscribe, and forward it on to your friends. And we'll see you in the next adventure. Cheers.